Breitbart. Couple things. First off, when Bannon took the job with Trump, this is a guy who likes the microphone. Steve is not shy about his opinions. But he immediately subjugated his own ego to the Trump campaign. And you've only heard from him really a couple of times since then. And that's too bad, because Steve is one of the most articulate believers and supporters in populism out there. So two things. Number one, uh, for the people who are inside the White House and outside the liberals, you, again, you just unleashed the beast. But the other problem was after Bannon left Breitbart, they lost it. There's a New York Times article right now, 5,000 word piece on Breitbart. I've been saying this for months, but they say it themselves in this big puff piece in the New York Times about Breitbart. Breitbart wants to be liked, okay? And Andrew Breitbart talked about the danger of that. Uh, he used to talk about, he said when he learned to hate, look, if, if Alex wanted to suddenly be liked by the establishment, what would that do to InfoWars, right? It would demolish it. You cannot, they'll never like you. First off, they'll never like you. The only way they'll like you if you're a complete traitor. They'll never like you. And furthermore, you, you diminish your position. So take Charlottesville, now, just a simple example. We have the moral high ground. The leftists in the media don't have the moral high ground. Our position is very straightforward. Owen, let me, I'll ask you, just answer without equivocation. Do you oppose political violence? Absolutely. Right. That was easy for you to say, right? It's easy for me to say. They can't say it. The leftists can't say it. This and is true. Even the, and even the Republicans can't say it. So we have the moral high ground. We're the people who oppose all political violence. When I see someone who's a white nationalist run a car into people, I'm opposed to identity politics. When I see an Islamist do it, I'm opposed to identity politics. There's not two sides, there's one side. And that's what the Ukrainian story, by the way, really shows. We'll talk about that in a second. But so many Republicans and, and a lot of libertarians are wimpy. They don't want to take the moral high ground. We have nothing to apologize for. We're against racism. We're against violence, right? That's our side. And we should be proclaim, pro, proclaiming that on uh, pre-caffeine, Owen, oh, forgive me. No, don't I, worry. I, I got my caffeine, too. And, and it's an interesting point that I you made about Bannon. Special you got. It's, a, it's an amazing point you made about Bannon. I completely agree with you. And... It's also complete veritas, everything you broke down. Great points from Lee Stranahan. I'm now joined in studio by Roger Stone. Let's get your quick take real quick. What happened to Bannon? Well, I think he died of his own hand. I mean, uh, I wrote for the Daily Caller yesterday uh, a piece more in sadness than anger that on the key issues that matter to conservatives, but more importantly to Trump supporters, he just has not stood tall. When Joe Arpaio can't get his calls returned when he calls the White House to tell them how he's being abused by the Trump Justice Department, something wrong with the system. When Steve Bannon is uh, championing the appointment of Rex Tillerson, whose chief patron is Condoleezza Rice, uh, and we now have a Trump State Department completely peopled with Bush, Romney, retreads, there's something fundamentally wrong. I, I like Steve. Um, I think my worldview is probably closer to his. But on the key issues, on the key fights, he just hasn't weighed in. Uh, he's been a bit of a disappointment. Lee, your take? Well, first off, hey, Roger, great to see you. Great to be here. Um, my, my, my view is that when you go up against the establishment, it's very difficult. And I think Bannon was trying to, you got to remember, Bannon's got a military background, right? He's used to chain of command. And I think the, the big danger here, and I tweeted this at the president today, he doesn't know who his real enemies are. Look, there's three things about Trump that you don't need to be a psychologist to figure out. He likes being flattered. If you punch at him, he punches back twice as hard, and he loves his family. I believe Donald Trump genuinely loves his family. So they figured out how to get to him, and they got to him through his liberal daughter. Ivanka Trump is a New York liberal, the end. Her friends are... Chelsea Clinton and Huma Abedin, uh, someone Roger and I have written about extensively before. When your friends Huma Abedin, there's a real problem. And they got to Ivanka at a party that was thrown at Wendy Murdoch's house right in January. 
where they had Mika Brzezinski and all these other people who hate Donald Trump. And I think Donald Trump has been suckered in. How do you get, I, I've learned this, Roger, you've worked on many political campaigns, more than I have. But one of the things that I've learned for, from my work in politics is no matter how smart you are as an outside consultant, at the end of the day, that candidate answers to their wife, their family, and the guy they went to college with. And it's so frustrating, and I'm sure you've seen this, Roger, where you give good advice to a candidate and they ignore it because their wife or their daughter or their friend who they grew up with is like, hey, I don't know if you really want to take that position. Um, and so I think Bannon suffered from that. I got to say, I liked everything Steve said in that interview that came out in the American Spectator. I liked everything he said. I don't I don't disagree with that, and I wouldn't expect him to have a, a perfect batting record. The problem is that many, many times he just never went to bat. So uh, his supporters out today saying, well, <clears throat> now the White House is completely populated with New York Democrats. True. That's because Steve wouldn't help anybody else who was for Donald Trump get hired in the in the Trump administration. Now to suddenly complain that you're alone is like, throwing, murdering your parents and then throwing yourself on the mercy of the court because you're an orphan. Uh, well, in, thought... in this case, he, he did not help any allies, not in the departments, not in the cabinet jobs, not in the White House. There aren't many Trump supporters in the Trump administration. Fine men like uh, David Urban or Ed Martin couldn't get a hand up to, to try to get into the administration to help. These are experienced people. These aren't lightweights. These are political heavyweights. People who played a key role in the election of Donald Trump couldn't get the time of day from Steve Bannon. Yeah, no, I look, I've said that I, I have not personally heard from Steve since June 27th. When I had a medical issue, I reached out to Steve, told him about it, and he, he sent back a note on that. Uh, I know other people who've said that, well, I, you, you may know some of them too, Roger, that Steve wants to avoid this Russia issue. And I work for Sputnik. I host a radio show on Sputnik because they let me say what I want. They don't restrict me in any way, and it's a great platform. Uh, uh, but I know for a fact, I'm sure it's worrisome. It's worrisome to some people on the right. There are other people on the right, not just Steve, who are like, oh, well, I don't want to talk to Lee because I don't want to get caught up in this Russia thing. And as I pointed out, this whole Russia story is a lie. Uh, you and I were talking about it a year ago before I ever had an inkling I'd work for Sputnik. Well, My if, story Andy, if, if you're going to limit yourself to talking uh, only to, uh, if you can't talk to people who are under investigation in the Russia matter, then you can't talk to the president of the United States. The investigation's yeah. a fraud. It's been a fraud from the beginning. That's the right. Russian collusion delusion. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get you on today is because there was collusion with a foreign country. There was interference in our elections. There was a presidential candidate working with the foreign power to affect the outcome of the election. Unfortunately for the left, it's not Russia, it's Ukraine. Uh, and um, uh, the whole Manafort drama, which we need to get into today, backs into this, and you told me some amazing things the other day that I think our our listeners need to learn about the level intensity of the Ukrainian effort to subvert our election. It's amazing. Lee Stranahan breaks the news of the Ukrainian Democrat collusion, and then all of a sudden the Russia narrative just disappears from the mainstream news every day. Interesting. We'll be right back with Roger Stone and Lee Stranahan. Owen Schroyer, Roger Stone, Lee Stranahan, Jedi Council here. We're going to get into the real collusion between the Democrats and Hillary Clinton Lee Stranahan has been reporting on that. Roger wants to get into some of those details. I pitch it now to Roger Stone. Uh, Lee, uh, when Paul Manafort joined the Trump campaign, um, uh, really at the end of a string of primaries, uh, as we were moving towards the convention, it became very clear that the Republican establishment both could and would try to steal the nomination from the presumptive nominee. Because the Republican National Committee uh, convention is governed by not federal law or state law, by its own rules, we have a historical precedent. In 1952, the nomination was stolen from Robert Taft and awarded to General Dwight D. Eisenhower. So the hire of Manafort um, struck fear in the hearts not only of the establishment Republicans, but more so 
Hillary and her friends went into overdrive looking for dirt. And I think when they couldn't find any, they sought to manufacture some because Manafort's reputation as a political gunfighter was very solid. This is a guy who knows how to run a national campaign. And to his credit, I think he was a seminal in Trump's nomination and preparation for the general election in terms of building a structure that could function during a general election campaign. Uh, at the time that the news broke regarding supposedly illicit payments to Manafort from the uh, a democratically elected or democratically recognized political party in Ukraine, I immediately smelled a rat. Uh, and this became a concerted effort to drive Manafort out of the Trump campaign, um, really at the behest of the Clinton Democrats who feared his leadership and his assistance to Trump. You have now done yeoman research on the backstory of the entire Ukrainian effort to affect the American elections, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. What happened well, here, Lee? Well, it's real significant, and, you, and a, a couple things. I was at the press conference where Ted Cruz in Texas basically announced that he was going to fight this. He realized, remember, there was a point in the election where he realized he couldn't win on the popular vote, so he started pursuing a delegate strategy, right? And that's the point they brought Manafort in, and he was a great hire. Now, as you mentioned, in mid-August, stories started to come out in the New York Times, Washington Post, Reuters, every major news outlet. They found a secret ledger in Ukraine, and a prosecutor says Paul Manafort was receiving cash payments in this secret ledger, also called a black ledger, in the Ukraine, okay? Now, let's cut... Let's cut to June 27th of this year, after the election. The same prosecutor who announced that secret ledger comes out and says, lo and behold, oops, no, Manafort's name is not in that. There were no cash payments. That's what he said. Now, how many media outlets do you think reported that? The Times, the po nobody, nobody. Bloomberg is the only people I found who reported it. CNN mentioned it, literally, at the bottom paragraph, the last paragraph of the story attacking Manafort, okay? Now, anybody who looks into this... Now, by the way, the other thing you would assume from this Trump-Russia narrative is that Paul Manafort, he's Russia-connected, he's Russia-connected. It's very clear Manafort was actually giving Yanukovych, the president of the Ukraine, advice to move away from Russia to move towards the EU. It's exactly the opposite of what the media is portraying, right? So the fact that they reported the secret ledger, but they didn't report the retraction by the same person was significant. Then, because I've been reporting on this, I was contacted by a source as close to this as you can possibly get in the Ukraine. And they sent me information about a investigation that had been opened in the Ukraine. I reported this two weeks ago. It's very important. I reported this two weeks ago, and I showed the material to other people because I wanted to put a flag in the ground that I did it. I didn't want to burn the source. Now, just a couple of days ago, it's confirmed what I said. You'll notice these stories uh, indicate that the investigation was opened on August 1st. Okay, this the story came out in Politico a couple days ago, this story here, and the caller one, they say that Apollo members demanding more information. If you dig down into the story, you'll see the investigation was actually started on August 1st. So that takes us to that. This is election interference. It was a false story. They've now retracted it. And the rest of the story involves how the DNC was directly involved, I think, illegally in doing this. So the Clintons get to collude with Ukraine. The Clintons get to try to impact elections all around the world. The Clintons get to have all of this hush money and all of these foundations. But it's Trump. Trump's not allowed to say anything. Trump's not allowed to do anything. Trump is the one colluding with Russia, even though there's no evidence. So the Clintons literally get to get away with everything, colluding with Russia, colluding with Ukraine, uh, Hillary Clinton gets to say uh, black people are predators and need to be brought to heel. Clintons just get away with everything. And then they use their attack dogs in the mainstream media 
to go after Trump. Now, Lee Stranahan, we've got seven minutes left with you. Let's get a boil down of everything we were just getting into with Roger Stone. Well, yeah, sure. The, the big thing here to look at, there was a political article back in January that started to outline this. And that political article points out that there's a, a DNC operative named Alexandra Chalupa. She worked in the Clinton White House. She was a DNC operative from 2004 to uh, 2016. And she's the one who met with the Ukrainians. Not only that, she also met with a, a, a group of journalists, Ukrainian journalists, at something called the uh, Open World Leadership Center. This is significant because this is not legal. The Open World Leadership Center is a branch. Of, it's part of the Library of Congress. It's supposed to, by statute, be nonpartisan. She was using it for partisan purposes. Now, the other thing that I want to point out, and this is a story that was also reported that relates. After the election, so Donald Trump's elected in November. Alexandra Chalupa works with a guy named Brett Kimberlin. Brett Kimberlin's a convicted bomber. He bombed, a, lit off five or six bombs, I forget the exact number, in Indiana, Indiana uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, to cover up an investigation into a murder he was being investigated for. So he, gets, he goes into prison, he gets out of prison, and he becomes a Democrat activist. He becomes a liberal activist. He starts a group called Justice Through Music Project. He starts a group called uh, uh, Velvet Revolution, okay? And he does a lot of work in Ukraine when he gets out of business. He eventually marries someone who's Ukrainian, who he met when, he was four, when she was 14, by the way. I should point that out as well. Why do I mention this guy? Because Alexander Chalupa, the DNC operative, used Brett Kimberlin as the bag man to pay a foreign national to fly to this country and to meet with Democrat leaders where they discussed how to keep Trump from taking office. Now, this was reported later, ironically enough, by BuzzFeed. They didn't mention Chalupa's name, but they did mention uh, all the events. And then the Daily Caller uh, followed up and said it was Alexandra Chalupa. I have subsequently interviewed witnesses who confirm every aspect of this story. The Democrats are, in my opinion, clearly money laundering here, and an investigation needs to be called. Now, by the way, the two guys to watch on this are Chuck Grassley and mm -hmm. Steve King, both from Iowa. Uh, Grassley Senate Judiciary point, Committee. Well, yeah, yeah and, and Grassley's pointed out the Ukrainian connection, and so has King. This is a story, and I'll put it like this. You just showed, Politico said, the U Ukrainian government is looking into DNC collusion. Try to Google that. Anybody use huh. Google, use DuckDuckGo, no, the New York Times, the Post, nothing, nothing at all. Now, you said, uh, Owen, correctly, that the de Democrats can get away with this. Why can they get away with this? We have to realize that we're fighting an asymmetrical information war here, right? They control... Uh, the the mainstream media, the established media, including Fox, and they do this through repetition. If they talk about a story, every they smeared Roger. I know the details of that story. All they have to do is say Roger Stone colluded with the Russians. People see the headline. They don't read that he dealt with somebody who's never been proven to be Russian. After a month and a half after the hack. They never point that out. So we need to fight the information war here asymmetrically and realize, look, the founding fathers beat the redcoats. Does that make sense? And the, the way they did it was not trying to, to fight them one-on-one. -on -one. And that's one of the reasons I'm actually glad Bannon's out of the White House, actually, because uh, I hope he speaks up. I hope he starts speaking up again. I think he, he will. You know, Steve is a brawler. And... Uh, I agree with Roger. Steve has not demonstrated that since he's been in the White House, and I hope that comes out. But but again, God bless you, uh, you know, uh, Roger. God bless you, you here at Infowars for fighting this information war in an asymmetrical way. That's the only way to do it. But all people have to do to get red pilled on this is look up what they tell you and what they don't tell you. They print the story. They don't print the retraction. It's stunning, actually. It's very stunning.
Well, what, what's really significant here, I think, is that the Ukrainian connection and the Ukrainian collusion to assist Hillary has to be viewed uh, now in light of the information that the Ukrainians have supplied missile technology to the North Koreans to make their missiles more viable and more accurate. This puts the whole thing in an entirely new light. The other question I get constantly that I want to address is about the raid at Manafort's home on the 26th of last month by the FBI, where they kicked in the door, the front door, then they kicked in the door of the bedroom where he was sleeping with his wife. Uh, the purpose of this raid was intimidation. They are trying to yes. squeeze Manafort. They want him to bear false witness against the president. The, Mueller wants him to testify that, yes, I colluded with the Russians, and yes, Trump knew everything. I know Paul Manafort 45 years. That wow. is never going to happen. Never. They want him to lie, and he won't lie. Uh, and, but that's what that was all about. This is the heavy, oppressive hand of Mr. Mueller uh, in the kind of tactic that you use on drug dealers, not political operatives. Let me go further. Here's another story that you probably know about, Roger. It's been completely not covered. Do you know about the blackmail claim? And do you know about the hacking of Manafort's daughter, Jess? Yes. Do you know about that? Yes. That's a major story. And by the way, who was attacking him? Ukrainians. The same guy who supplied that ledger, Leschenko, he's a Ukrainian politician. He's the one who Manafort had to, I think, file a suit against and filed police report against saying this person's trying to blackmail me. And Paul Manafort's daughter was hacked. You never hear that in the news, right? He was hacked. So it's not just government intimidation. It's, it's black ops intimidation and literal hacking of, of his daughter. Now, the other thing that's interesting is they never print Manafort. Again, Manafort, I'll tell you the best article, as you, as you well know, Paul Manafort's father was the mayor of New Britain, Connecticut. Uh, I was doing some research in Connecticut newspapers. Uh, it was either the Hartford Current or the New Britain paper, had the longest quote I've ever read in the media from Manafort, and he lays out now, that, that the, he was urging Yanukovych to move towards the EU, not to move towards Russia. The recent Washington Post story shows that when people were trying to set up meetings between Trump and the Russians, if they were trying to do that, if they were suggesting it, who was coming out against it? Even the Washington Post admits that. Paul Manafort, right? This is a complete smear job. I don't know Manafort at all. I've never spoken to him at all. It's a, but just as a researcher, it's a complete smear. The other thing that's really significant is what I've been reporting this week about Charlottesville. Charlottesville, if you just look up uh, Ukraine torch march, you'll find exact mm -hmm. duplicates of what we saw in Charlottesville in Ukraine in 2013. And here's something else. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Roger. David Duke, the white supremacist who was at Charlottesville, he is a doctorate, right? He calls himself Dr. David Duke. Do you have any idea where David Duke, if you had a guess, what country he might have gotten that from? The island of Island State University? No, no, it's Ukraine. But oh. guess. It's Ukraine. Look it up. Just look up David Duke, Ukraine. He's got extensive connections. What happened in the Ukrainian coup is the United States, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John McCain, the CIA, and the media, we overthrew and by, all funded by George Soros, we overthrew the government of the Ukraine and put in literal neo-Nazis. Anyone can look up S-V-O-B as in boy, O-D-A, Svoboda. Svoboda, there you go, right there. That's from David Duke's own site bragging about his Ukrainian connections. So when I started to notice this, and I started to notice, could you go back to the picture of the torch march for a second? Go back to the last picture. 